Hi everyone, welcome to Medicine Not YouTube channel. It is my first video in anatomy lecture. Now you will see about the fourth ventricle. If you want more videos on anatomy, please to comment in the comment box. I will now you will start about the lecture which is fourth ventricle. It is a primitive cavity located in the hind brain. It is a primitive cavity which is located in the hind brain. There is no change in size and shape of of the development from the uh, of the CNS. There is no change in size and shape from the development of the CNS. The primitive, the word primitive means the there is no change in size and shape of the fourth ventricle from the development of the CNS. It is a diamond shape and tent shape. It is dorsally behind the fourth ventricle, cerebellum is located. From the front of the fourth ventricle, there is a pons and the upper part of the medulla oblongata. The boundaries of the fourth ventricle are it is divided into angles and limits. The angle are divided into three angles, which is superior, inferior, as well as lateral angle. The superior angle, which is raises, raises the foramen named cerebral aqueduct which communicates with the third ventricle. The inferior angle which is raises to the foramen named central canal which communicate with the spinal cord. Lateral angle which raises to the foramen called foramen lushka which the fourth ventricle communicates with the pontomedullary junction. Now we will see in the image. It is clear to see an image in an anatomy to remember these names as well as the structures which are located Here is the image, it is a fourth ventricle, this is known as fourth ventricle. Uh, to the, behind it, it is, there is an which is known as cerebellum. As well as in front of it, there is a uh, pons as well as the upper part of the medulla oblongata. Here, to the upper part, this, this is the fourth ventricle, this, it is a tent shaped one. The upper part is just communicates with the third ventricle which is cerebral aqueduct and the lower part which communicates with the spinal cord which is known as central canal. Here it is the central canal. The, and on the lateral to it, it communicates with the pontomedullary junction. It is not visible in this section, in this diagram. Now we will see the limits of the fourth ventricle, superior lateral limit as well as inferior lateral limit. Superior lateral limit is formed by the right and left superior cerebellar pedicle and the inferior lateral limit is formed by the right and left inferior cerebellar pedicle. Here superior cerebellar pedicle and here it is inferior cerebellar pedicle. This is the fourth ventricle which is shows the limits here, it is a simple diagram. Here it is superior lateral limit where the superior cerebral pedicle connects the both the side right superior cerebral pedicle and left superior cerebral pedicle. Here the inferior superior cerebral pedicle connects right and left which forms the inferior lateral limit and which forms the superior lateral limit. The joining of this inferior lateral limit forms the apex. Then inner part of the pedicle of superior and inferior which is known as velum. The superior cerebellar pedicle forms superior velum and the slus inferior cerebellar pedicle forms inferior velum. The roof, which is diamond shaped, the superior and inferior limit which projected to the vermis of the cerebellum. The roof, which is a diamond shape, it looks like this. The superior part as well as the inferior part projected to the vermis of the cerebellum. Now I will show in the image. This is the velum. This is the which roof which projected. This is a superior uh, velum as well as this is an inferior velum. Superior limit as well as inferior limit which projected towards the vermis of the cerebellum. This is the cerebellum which projected to the this is vermis which is projected to the vermis of the cerebellum which is diamond shaped. 
now we will see about the floor formed by the posterior surface of the pons and medulla oblongata the floor is formed by the posterior surface of the pons and medulla oblongata which is rhomboid shape the floor of the fourth ventricle is divided into upper and lower part by medullary stria now we will see about the floor which is formed by the posterior part of the pons and medulla oblongata and it is in rhomboid shape this is the floor of the fourth ventricle which is formed by the pons and medulla and it is a rhomboid shaped floor the floor is formed by the posterior part of the pons and medulla oblongata and rhomboid shaped the floor of the fourth ventricle is divided into upper part and lower part by medullary stria then the upper part and lower part is divided into right and left by, by the posterior median sulcus this right and left part is divided into medial and lateral by the sulcus limitans it is little bit confusing right you will now see in the image clearly it is the floor of the fourth ventricle it divides into upper part and lower part by the which is medullary stria it is the upper part this and this one is the lower part it is divided into upper and lower by the medullary stria and it is divided into right as well as left by this posterior medial median sulcus i have written it as a median sulcus it is located posteriorly so it is known as posterior median sulcus and this right and left part is divided into medial and lateral by uh, line which is known as sulcus limitan here at it is a sulcus limitan which is the here it is it is medial and it is lateral medial as well as lateral the sulcus limitan has two fovea the superior fovea as well as inferior fovea the upper end of the sulcus limitan is highly pigmented known as locus cerulus and the upper and the medial part shows an elongated medial eminence at the highest point of medial eminence which is facial colliculus this area where the 6th cranial nerve surrounds the 7th cranial nerve generally the new uh, this is the 7th nucleus this is the 6th one generally the cranial nerve nucleus moves front but in the 7th cranial new nucleus uh, cranial nerve it moves behind around the 6th nerve which is abducens nerve around it and this forms an colliculus a projection like a bend which is a facial colliculus which is seen in the four floor of the fourth ventricle it is a medial and round it is a medial and as well as a round eminence i will show show it in the image this sulcus limitan has two fovea in it which is superior fovea as well as inferior fovea this one is the superior fovea and here it is the inferior fovea where it is and this known as facial colliculus which, which the 6th 7th cranial nerve comes around the 6th cranial nerve and forms a colliculus this is known as facial colliculus the lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle shows a triangular area which now we we saw about the upper part now you will see about the lower part the lower part of the fourth ventricle shows a triangular area which is known as hypocolossal triangle and vagus triangle in vagus triangle the dorsal nucleus nerve, nucleus of the vagus is present and lower to the vagus trigon there is an area which is known as prostema which is the vomiting center here it is the lower part and it is in hypoglossal triangle and this one is the vagal triangle lower to it is known as postrema which is the vomiting center this vagal triangle consists of a dorsal nucleus of the vagus which is the 10th cranial nerve and the apex is formed by the both inferior cerebellar velum as well as inferior cerebellum velum from the apex and it is a non nervous gray matter now that's all about the fourth ventricle now we will see the applied anatomy the cisternal puncture the collection of csf csf fluid cerebral spinal fluid from the subarachnoid system in case of fail of lumbar puncture 
hydrocephalus abnormal increased collection of csf in the ventricle it is divided into internal as well as external hydrocephalus the internal hydrocephalus caused by the obstruction of the cerebral aqueduct and this causes brain tumor then the external hydrocephalus is the obstruction of the central canal it is the systemal puncture this puncture which the needle is injected in the angle of the nasion in between the medulla oblongata as well as in between the posterior atlanto occipital ligament as well as the uh, posterior arch of the atlas here the csf fluids are collected when there is a blockage here which is cerebral aqueduct it is known as internal hydrocephalus if the blockage is in the central canal it is known as external it just comes out of the cranial cavity so it is external hydrocephalus hydrocephalus means increase abnormal collection of csf in the ventricles that's all thank you if you want more videos please do like share and subscribe my youtube channel or you if you want some other videos please do comment in my comment box thank you